General Aftercare Instructions by a piercer. Coming up next, so stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to a level of expertise as someone who's been in the industry for over 26 years. So what is this video? Uh, this is a general aftercare instructions video. I'm guessing that I may have referred you to this because it's during the uh, pandemic and I'm no longer going through the aftercare instructions verbally. If you came into the studio, you probably got one of these. On the back of this is going to be uh, the size of your jewelry, um, the, the make or the style, uh, what it's made out of, when it was done, and what your average healing time is. Now understand, average healing time is not a 100% thing. That's just a rough estimate. If you open that front flap, you're going to find a shopping list there. Um, the things I'm going to suggest you pick up are sterile saline solution. I like Nelmed. You can find it at Walgreens, Target, um, and Walmart. Pretty much uh, anywhere that has like a first aid aisle is probably going to have sterile saline solution. Additionally, you want to pick up, it depends on the piercing, but I like disposable plastic cups for soaks, for piercings that you can't really do a soak, like ears, maybe eyebrows, nostrils, uh, septums are very easy, most oral piercings. I would suggest picking up gauze sponges. If that's going to be too expensive, then at least clean paper towels. Additionally, if you feel like you're going to probably make a mistake, I would suggest picking up an antimicrobial or germicidal soap. It would be best to pick up something like satin or proven. However, most of us don't have access to it and it's expensive when you do find it. A, cheap, a cheaper alternative would be a uh, antibacterial soap that doesn't have any fragrances, uh, moisturizers, or any additives uh, such as dial, four, or dial gold. Hopefully, if you are diligent about your cross-contamination prevention, you will never, ever have to use it. It's just something you want to have on hand. So let's talk about doing compresses and soaks. To do those, uh, if you're doing a soak, you want to fill up uh, your plastic cup with enough of that saline solution to cover the piercing. Um, if you're doing compresses, you want to take that folded up paper towel or better yet, sterile piece of gauze sponge, saturate the area, uh, saturate to the point where it's damp. Then apply it to the piercing area. If you're doing soaks, you want to press, bend over, press the room of glass against the area, then rock backwards so you're creating a vacuum and hold it in place. I generally suggest doing compresses or soaks for roughly about 10 minutes, twice daily. Um, it's a good idea to rinse afterwards under running water just to get off any of the saline and any type of discharge or anything that's going on. You should start that beginning on the day after the piercing in the morning and continue that for the minimum healing time, which is listed on your sheet, your average healing time, or until you stop seeing discharge collecting and depositing on the jewelry and the piercing holes will start to kind of bend inward or grow inward. Uh, kind of like the rounded edge of a glass or a bowl. If it seems healed to you, but you're not sure, stop by, have me take a look at it. I'll be happy to make that decision for you. If I didn't do the piercing, feel free to stop by your piercer. I'm sure they would be happy to make that decision for you. Now with the soap, uh, what's gonna, the only time that comes into account is if you feel like you have contaminated the area, you've just made a mistake. Uh, it's easy to do it in the shower. You just jump in the shower, take care of any normal bathing duties you may have, spray the water onto the area to rinse off the area, take the soap, squirt out a pearl drop in the palm of your hand. It does not take a lot, just a little bit. Lather it up well so you're diluting it. Gently apply it to the piercing area. Let it stay in contact for roughly about 30 seconds, which, as we all know, is about equivalent to singing Happy Birthday or Mary Had a Little Lamb twice or reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Then rinse under running water and pat it dry with a clean paper towel. Once again, there is no reason to do this on a daily basis. This is just something you want to do if you make a mistake. If you don't feel like you made a mistake, there's absolutely no reason to do it. 
And when I say apply the soap, I'm just talking about the general area. Don't move or rotate the jewelry through the piercing or dig around. You just are, what you're doing is you're basically killing off any microorganisms that might be in the area or a majority of them to give your healthy microorganisms, that colony that lives on your skin, a chance to repopulate the area and fight off any invaders. Speaking of mistakes, let's talk about cross-contamination. Cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Handle it by the ball end or whatever is uh, the closure whenever possible. The only time you really have any contact with that piercing is when you're doing the compresses um, or soaks or checking the tightness of the ends. On threaded jewelry, it's a good idea to check the tightness of the ball on a regular basis, at least a couple times a week. They can come unscrewed on their own. They usually fall off at the worst possible time and land in the most disgusting thing near you. You don't need to get pliers out. You don't need to buy Loctite. You just need to check it on a regular basis. The rest of the time, leave the piercing alone. Do not handle it. Do not touch it. Do not move it. Do not rotate it. Nothing. Leave it alone. Keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it. Understand that microorganisms like bacteria and other pathogens do move on the surface of your skin. So anytime you touch the area, it's gonna need to wash your hands before you do so. At some point in your life, you might've been told to spin, rotate, or move jewelry during the healing process. Otherwise it's gonna become permanently affixed to your body. That is impossible. There is absolutely no truth in that. Constantly moving and rotating jewelry is just gonna prolong your healing period Increase your likelihood of, of infection by overhandling the jewelry and possibly causing an infection. Leave it alone. Let it be. It doesn't need to be moved on a regular basis, and it doesn't need to be checked on a regular basis to make sure it can move. No reason for that. Just leave it be. Piercings sometimes will tighten and loosen. Some piercings, piercings are more prone to this, like nipple piercings, for example. Other piercings are not, uh, but they you will eventually loosen up. It's generally a good idea, a good sign because it means your body's producing tissue the way we want it to. So don't freak out if the jewelry won't move. No oral contact or exchanging bodily fluids on near around the piercing. Um, that does include your own saliva. I've never understood why people think it's safe to lick their fingers and clean things. Don't do that. It's disgusting and your saliva is full of bacteria. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Uh, especially smaller animals that like to sleep next to your face and are attracted to shiny objects. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. A way to get around if you have a facial piercing or an ear piercing, a way to get around constantly changing the pillowcase is to put uh, a clean uh, kind of older t-shirt over the, over the uh, pillow, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side, turn inside out, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side. That way you get about four nights out of it. The other advantage to it is sometimes piercings will bleed for that first couple nights, so it cuts out the likelihood of staining the pillow in the pillowcase. Piercings that are located in the torso or the genital area, I generally suggest putting clean clothing on um, the night uh, or every night. Uh, don't rewear the same pajamas or underwear. Just to be on the safe side, change into something that's clean. Do not submerge piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of until it is completely healed, meaning no swimming, do not submerge it in hot tubs, none of that. The only place that's technically safe would be your well-cleaned and well-maintained bathtub. Isolate the piercing. As I talked about earlier, piercings do not like contact or being played with. Um, you also want to avoid contact with unclean objects, especially with ear piercings and facial piercings like phones, headphones, earbuds, hats, glasses, anything that comes in contact with the area, you should probably avoid contact or make sure you're cleaning them on a regular basis and disinfecting them. Do not sleep directly on the piercing. Make sure you're sleeping on your other side or your back. Sleeping on piercings, I don't care how good it feels to lay on it. The constant pressure and movement will cause issues. With ear piercings, um, I generally suggest kind of one of two methods. The first one being is if you have to sleep on that side, that is, is taking one of those U-shaped travel neck pillows 
wrapping it around the general area and sleeping with your ear in the center of it. Another option to that would be to take a big fluffy bath towel that's clean, of course, roll it up, put it in the shape of a donut and sleep your ear in the center of it. If you use the pillow, make sure if you're going out and buying one that it has a removable liner so that you can pop it in the, uh, the, the laundry and clean it on a regular basis. With female nipple piercings, I generally suggest wearing something that has even support, um, something like sports bras, men's A-shirts, tank tops for those first couple weeks as it goes through its most sensitive period. Um, after that, experiment, listen to your body. If it hurts to wear something, don't do it. Also, don't sleep on the piercings, as I mentioned earlier. Navel piercings, avoid piercing or any clothing that has direct contact or a waistband that's around the navel. That constant rubbing and agitating of the piercing um, will cause issues, even in some cases after the piercing is completely healed. So wear something that's lower uh, cut or is loose fitting, like bibs. With genital piercings, uh, wear what's comfortable. Usually with any new piercing, if it's in an area where you can kind of constrict the movement, it's usually best. Um, something like boxer briefs for men, uh, females usually not big of an issue. Now let's move on to jewelry. Leave that piece of jewelry in until it's healed. Unless there's an issue where we've had to pierce with a longer barbell or longer stud and it's gotten to the point where that longer stud is catching on things and causing damage to the piercing. Then you need to contact me or your piercer and have them change it to something shorter. Don't try to change it at home, please. Um, otherwise leave the jewelry in until it heals. After it heals, you can take it out and replace another piece. However, you do want to leave something in it at all times for roughly the next two to three years, only taking it out to replace. Understand, regardless of how long you've had the piercing, if you remove the jewelry and leave it out for an extended period of time, your body's going to reconnect the tissue and close the piercing. So it's a good idea if you like it, leave something in it. Personally, I never charge chain jewelry regardless of where it comes from. I also run through my autoclave and sterilize it as long as it is a proper size, made of proper material, and it's appropriate for that particular piercing. When in doubt, uh, if you see something, you're not quite sure if it's going to work or not, get in contact with me. Um, when you're picking out jewelry, good rule of thumb is if it's got sharp edges, points, things dangling off of it, or it seems extremely heavy, it's probably going to be damn uncomfortable and cause issues. Usually the more simplistic the jewelry is, the better off you're going to be. Um, I will give you advice regardless of where you're spending your money, even if it's not in my studio. Also, if you go to my website, the axiom body piercing, uh, dot com, or axiompiercing.com, uh, there are plenty, I list roughly four to five different places I suggest buying jewelry online. When buying jewelry online, I really suggest that you look at whether or not the manufacturer is listed on the site. Uh, it gives you the ability to go, okay, so this person made this piece of jewelry to research them and find out the quality that they produce. If there isn't one or it's the brand name of whatever site you're going on, chances are it's mass produced and it is of low quality. But when in doubt, even there, if you're one of my clients or if you're not one of my clients, feel free to uh, copy the link, send me an email and ask me what I think of that particular piece of jewelry. I'll generally answer one way or another. I want you to have a piercing that you have for the rest of your life and putting on putting proper jewelry, even in a healed piercing, is very important to continuing that. Infections. Infections are extremely rare. Um, Signs of infection is redness, discolorization, heat, or feels very inflamed or feverish. Discharge that comes out in a pus form, usually very milky, um, kind of uh, um, can have an odd color or a unnatural looking color. Um, also, there'll be pain, usually throbbing, aching pain. Um, also, if you see any type of travel on any type of marks. Usually, it's a combination of two of those things. But if you do think you have an infection, the two worst things you can do is put off getting taken care of and taking the jewelry out. Putting off getting it taken care of is just gonna uh, increase the likelihood of it getting worse and being harder to resolve. Uh, taking the jewelry out, the problem with that is, is how your body heals infections and what happens when you take the jewelry out. Your body heals infections by pushing infected tissue fluids out through the wound while replacing them with healthy tissue below. When you remove the jewelry, which is the only thing keeping those two holes open, they can close, possibly trapping that affected tissue and fluids inside your body. 
leading to one of two things happening. Worst case scenario, it turns into an inward traveling infection. It begins to actually spread in other tissue if left untreated, could possibly turn septic or cause permanent tissue damage. The other one and more common one is that your body will uh, isolate the infection by developing a cyst or an abscess, then slowly, very painfully, push it to the surface. Um, in both cases, you're definitely getting medical treatment. If you think you have an infection, get in contact with me immediately if you're my client um, or seek professional medical advice. Do not prolong getting it taken care of. With that all said, as I said at the beginning, infections are very rare. Uh, usually it's one of three things that cause infections or what my experience is. Either the first thing is, is either the person flat out didn't take care of it. So if you take care of it, probably aren't gonna see an infection. The second one being is that the person has a pre-existing health condition that they're unaware of, uh, something that's affecting their immune system or their body's per, uh, ability to heal. The third one is something beyond your control happens, like somebody purposely like licks their finger and plays with your piercings or something to that degree, something that you can't control. Well, unless you can keep those people away from you. The biggest thing is, is get it taken care of. Now, it's not uncommon to see some signs of infection like discomfort, discolorization, heat, turns to touch, inflammation, swelling, off and on anywhere from uh, some people a couple days, some people up to about a week, week and a half as your body accepts the jewelry and gets over the trauma of the piercing. It is also not uncommon to see a tad bit of bleeding um, anywhere from one to three days, sometimes five days. Usually it's kind of collects around the piercing holes. Most people don't even notice it. If you do notice it, leave it alone. Let it do what it needs to do. It'll stop doing that when it doesn't need to do that anymore. Constantly cleaning off the blood with a Q-tip or whatever is just going to, it's kind of like picking a scab. It's just going to make it bleed more and more and more and more and more. And it can lead to problems. Just leave it alone. Genital piercings are an entirely different animal. Because it is a blood-rich area, it's not uncommon for some of them to bleed up to five days. You do, want to take, you do want to take precautions with that. I generally suggest wearing a sanitary napkin or pad to cut down on staining clothing. It also adds a little bit of cushioning while it's going through its initial tender phase. And it cuts down the amount of moisture in the area, which cuts down the amount of bacteria when your body's most susceptible to infection. I think that pretty much is just kind of covers pretty much everything. If you got a oral piercing, there's a separate video that I'm going to be filming right after this one that is going to cover any additional things that you need to do. Um, and basically I would have probably given you two forms. I would have given you, I would have given you this one and I would have given you this one. If you uh, like the video, found it informative, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it because we like it when you like it. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. Uh, we're just gearing back up. You're probably going to see a lot of videos from us here over the next couple weeks if I have time. Because I think I'm going to be kind of busy. We're just reopening. Um, if you like merch, t-shirts, etc., check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Various different uh, t-shirts, tote bags, all kinds of leggings, decals, all kinds of fun stuff, and lots of different uh, designs are there. And it helps support us, helps support the channel, and helps support the studio. If you feel like I've missed something, which is very possible because I kind of ran through this without any notes, do leave a comment. Um, I do answer them on a regular basis. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have, even if it's not related to this particular subject. Uh, if you are a client, feel free to contact me by phone, through Facebook, uh, or uh, by email. I generally do not answer messages on Instagram and et cetera, because if I did, I would have... I, I, I would have to have like eight apps open at all times. It's just too complicated. Email, Facebook, two easiest ways, and, and phone, of course. You know, be old fashioned, call me. Otherwise, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Um, as my father always drilled into me, the only stupid question is one you don't ask. So that's all I have to say today. Uh, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area and I haven't pierced you already, I look forward to seeing you for your body piercing needs in the future. Stay safe, everybody. Stay healthy and wash your hands.